Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at those beta applications available from Synology NAS. In the latest version of DSM 6.2.2 there's been a whole host of new apps added to the available ones on there. I believe this a lot of this is to do with a number of the key apps that are getting upgrades for at the end of the year when DSM 7.0 comes we will see these fully rolled out along with more updates to other stuff too. But I've already done a bunch of videos on things like Migration Assistant and Synology Drive. Hopefully they've arrived with you now. But today I want to do a quick one about TeamViewer. Now TeamViewer is a key application for a number of you. For those who aren't aware, TeamViewer is this great app that's been around for a long time. It's a software and a service that allow you to remote access PCs, phones, tablets and more remotely over the internet. It's free to join if you want a non-commercial account and if you are going to use it for business you will need to get a commercial account. Um, for today's video I'm using a non-commercial use uh, application here. I've just signed up a quick one here and you can tell I'm even using the VM that's still got activate windows knocked into the bottom right. But um, what I'm going to show you today is one why would a person use it and two how to do it because technically a NAS doesn't require TeamViewer for access. The whole point of a NAS is that you can access it over the network or you can use the Quick Connect um, Synology add-on that allows you to access your NAS anywhere in the world. So why on earth would you use TeamViewer to access your NAS? Well, the main reason is that a number of you already use TeamViewer for accessing a whole host of files, formats and applications. You might have the need to access a number of different um, hardware platforms from a single terminal. And the idea of opening up a web browser to access your NAS might be cumbersome. So the idea of turning your NAS into um, a TeamViewer portal access point is hugely useful. It doesn't cost anything to install. It's a free beta. And once you go into it and you open up the app for the first time, it gives you the information about the device. It will give you a password and at give you a part once you've got the password you can assign the device to an account so right now even though it's got assignment if we remove that assignment it will give a new password so let's remove that now we're going to remove the assignment from that device onto this team viewer account close it reopen it hopefully we've got a password and now we've got the id and a new password we're going to copy that and use that later on then we're going to make our way into team viewer Go to Remote Management, Computer Contacts down here. There's the Synology NAS. So we're going to forget this Synology NAS now. We're going to remove it and re-add this device. So from here, we want to add a brand new machine, add a new remote computer. From here, we'll add that password we just added, but of course, we'll also need that address. We go back into it. We'll call this one SYN. And now the NAS has been added to that list. Now, another thing you need to do, one of the main reasons you needed to create an account before doing this, because if you try to control from this point, you won't be able to access the NAS. If you try to access it now, the following will happen. Connection could not be established. And that's because we've not set up a remote access. The reason you need to do that is to head up here, click to assign to account. The main reason we had to create an account for TeamViewer here. Click assign to account. And then you can set up, and this device has now been linked to this account. So this time, when we enable remote access, we have a pop-up here. And then after a few seconds of access, we can now access our Synology NAS. And this means that from this one portal access point here, while that does that in the background, we can access multiple PCs. There we are, we're logged in. And we can access DSM via the familiar, well at least to some of you, TeamViewer user access point. Now, it's worth mentioning that the screen recording software I'm using is slowing down a lot of the rendering of this stuff. So don't blame the Synology NAS um, for that slight delay there. It's worth saying that here is what you will see if you were accessing the NAS via the web browser. Whereas TeamViewer is accessing it 
as a completely separate instance. You may notice that we don't have any of that stuff on screen because we're accessing the device in a completely separate um, user instance. We're not going to see the same thing, which is quite useful if you've got multiple users accessing the device at once or if you've got multiple technicians all with their own individual team viewer access account. And from here, you've got the same full access to the Synology NAS as you would if you were accessing via the web browser. And of course, from here, once you're done with team viewer, you can deactivate and dis disconnect from the account as and when you choose. And again, there's nothing stopping you once you disconnect from this, it'll ask you, are you playing fair? And you can still access all the other devices like you would within team viewer. But that has been team viewer beta for Synology NAS. Hopefully when it gets rolled out fully, a lot of the other settings and features will be bumped in. If we look at some of these other PCs, we have got other settings and add-ons that are available. And right now, Synology NAS doesn't support most of those features as it's in beta. But I'm looking forward to seeing some of the Wacom LAN and alert features that we see in other thing, uh, in other settings of the TeamViewer application. But otherwise, hope you've enjoyed this. Do let me know if there's anything I missed or if there's any stuff that you'd like to see on Synology now. Do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheerio.